lot of respect for that football team we just beat, and a lot of respect for that football coach. And uh, I know a lot of people talk about being Kentucky, but that's a good football team. They're an extremely physical football team. They know how to run the ball, and they run it really well, and they play really hard on defense. So uh, make no qualms about it. That's a good team. And uh, I'll brag on my team a little bit. They, they never quit. They fight as hard as any group I've ever been around. Um, and they, they just challenge each other. You know, they challenge each other on the sideline. And, uh, they respond when, when adversity hits. And I, I, can't, I can't thank those kids enough for that. It's, uh, it's been tough. And uh, those guys bought in and really, really, really done some good things. So proud of them. Coach, can you just uh, talk about that drive? You got 75 yards here, close. You, you know, you need to get down there as close as you possibly can. What was your level of confidence going in, and kind of what was the, um, you know, the, the strategy? What was you thinking? Well, Jim and I talked after the kickoff that we were going to be patient. You know, we, our goal was to give us a chance to win, but not give them a chance to win, which is tough because you go out there and you know run it three times and punt. Question everything, go out there and throw it, and the clock stops. So you got to call plays that you think can be successful. Nobody panicked. Um, the clock was rolling a lot, but you know we, we worked that every Monday and every Thursday. We do that drill. And we say, okay, this is your situation. Sometimes it's less time. Sometimes it's more time. That's a lot of time because we had uh, two timeouts. You know, I thought Jacob managed it well. He made some good decisions uh, with the ball. We threw and caught the ball in that drive. Imagine that. Throw and catch. We threw and caught the ball. When we do that, you know, we're a balanced team. And when we're a balanced team, we're a good team. But when we don't catch it or we don't run it efficiently, it hurts us. But I was proud of the way the kids executed in that situation. Even saw in the last run, you know, we said, hey, get what you can get. If you can get to the middle, get to the middle. And he did. So, and obviously proud of Rodrigo. I mean, who would have thought after the spring game and all the stuff that the guy would hit, what, four field goals? Is that right? Yeah. Four field goals. One of them was. What was it, 50, 49, 49? So I'm proud of Rodrigo, and I'm so happy for him because the kids work so hard. I mean, he hits those in practice. Lately, he's, he's, he's been drilling those things in practice. So that's why we're willing to put him out there. Did you think he was going to hit that? The last one? Oh, I knew he was going to hit it. The 49-yarder? I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> what does that speak to his character? That he loses the job and then takes it over? Maybe it's just a bad coaching decision. <laughs> Maybe he should have been kicking the whole time. But he's a, he's a, he's a high character kid. And uh, I appreciate all he does. He, he never stops. They had, they had a lot of challenges in camp where we tried to challenge him to see who could kick better. He didn't win all those. And uh, he was resilient about it. He kept coming back. And uh, he's got to keep kicking off better. <laughs> That's what I want. I want him to kick that ball off in the end zone. Coach, I uh, was just talking to him a minute ago. He won't even talk about being confident. I mean, he won't even mention anything about it. but. He's hit nine straight now. I mean, how confident are you in him? Well, he does that in practice. So uh, we show confidence in players who do things well in practice. I mean, people think practice doesn't matter. Practice matters. He's, he, he has hit a lot of field goals in a row in practice. And the team almost gathers around and they just they, they count them out. You know, it's like he gets five shots, boom, he makes all five. Everybody's going nuts. He's just really in rhythm. And uh, I think a lot of that credit should go to Fritz, too. He whips that thing back there fast. He's plenty of time. Jacob's a really good holder, but the kid's got uh, ice in his veins right now. He's done a good job. What happens to Jacob in the fourth quarter? I mean, I don't know that he necessarily performs better physically, but was that three times this year? That yeah, I don't know that anything happens as much as we let it happen. We, 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 we give him a chance to, to take over the game and do that. He does not <laughs> He does not feel pressure. He's a, he, That's just the kid. The kid's got a very calm demeanor. It's what you want a quarterback to have composure-wise. He really doesn't get much flustered. I'm proud of him for that. Uh, hopefully he can grow and develop from that. It seemed like you were really talking slash coaching Isaiah McKenzie a lot tonight. Yeah, Isaiah's a, Isaiah's a thrill a minute. He really is. You know, I, I was more upset with Isaiah about not calling out the ball rolling on the ground next to our player. That's something that we control. It's something that Isaiah controls. something we practice. Point at the ball. You let the guy know it's there so he gets away from it. Well, he didn't do that with Miko. So I was upset about that. Now, the ball rolling down there and then down another one, hey, that's going to happen. If you can't catch it, that's going to happen. And he was trying to be aggressive and make a play when he tried to catch it. And the guy, you know, I thought it was pretty close to kick, kick catch interference, but they didn't call it. So it wasn't, and he ends, up, he ends up fumbling one there. But, again, the kid is an aggressive, really hard practicing kid that 
you know, he, he sets the identity for our special team.